In today's tutorial, I'm gonna show you a few of my favorite techniques on how to turn your images into the monochrome style using the Luminar for iPad. The application offers a number of tools that we can combine together and create incredible results. So let me show you how it's done. Okay, so today we are working on a monochrome edit. Starting with the first look, we're gonna use the basic tools available in the application. Well, talking about monochrome, let's jump straight into the monochrome tool, where for this specific image, we can just take the slider and see which look we like the best. Now, if you never used the tool before, basically what it does, it turns the image into black and white, and then it takes the specific color you choose, for example, at this moment, red, and it adjust the luminance of the color with minus 50% on it. So basically it makes the specific color darker. So in this case, the red or the yellow, green, magenta or blue. Well, let's have a look at it. For the first look, I would like to keep the skin quite bright and just get a classic black and white look. So for that, we can, let's go to beginning. We can just go, for example, for the blue color. So once we're done here, we have the black and white look created with the monochrome tool and we can make a few more adjustments. We can, for example, jump into the develop tool where we can add a little bit of extra contrast using the contrast slider. And we can also adjust our black and white points using the black and white controllers. So we can make the blacks a little bit darker to create more contrast and make the whites a little bit brighter. To adjust it even further, let's make the highlights brighter to create more contrast of the background with the foreground. Uh, maybe not that much, maybe somewhere around here. And we can open up the shadows a little bit as well. Let's just do that. Uh, nothing crazy, just somewhere around five or 10. So this is just a very basic look using a quick edit with the monochrome tool and develop tool. Now, once you're comfortable with the basic black and white look, we can move to something a little bit more advanced. So this time we're not going to use the monochrome tool. We're going to start in the develop tool. Here we're going to use the vibrance and saturation controller to adjust the image and make it black and white. So let's do that. Let's take the controller at the bottom and bring it all the way to the side to make sure that the values are minus 100 on vibrance and if we manage minus 100 on saturation. So now we have the image in black and white. For the time being, let's close the develop tool and move into the curves. What we're going to do in curves, we're going to add a fade to it. We're going to make it more kind of like a street or upbeat and new trendy look. So we're gonna take the curve at the bottom. This is where we're adjusting our shadows and we're gonna bring it up. So let's have a look at it. I think somewhere around here. Now to bring back some of the contrast, we're gonna create another point, let's say here, and we're gonna very basically bring it down, let's say somewhere around here. Now we want to bring back some of the highlights and for this, it's really simple. Let's create one more point on the top and just drag it up a little bit, I think somewhere around here. Once we're done, we finish with the curves, we can go back into the develop tool where now we can add a little bit of vignette using the vignette slider. When you go towards the right, you add bright vignette. When you go the other way around, you add dark vignette. So let's do that somewhere around minus 40. And we can also add a little bit of contrast using the contrast slider. So just like that, let's have a look at the before and after. We have a kind of trendy faded look. Now to top it off, if you would want to, you could, for example, go into the structure AI and instead of adding a structure by adding details and clarity, we can take the controller and bring it down. Now what it's gonna do, it's gonna create an automatic mask on the image and it will keep the main subject or the human without the adjustment and it will only apply the adjustment to the rest of the image. So in this case, we're adding a glow to the rest of the photo using the structure AI. Once we finish adding the glow, we can close the tool and continue. Now we could right now export the image as it would be finished. 
However, additionally, let's turn our controllers into the photo filter. And once we in the photo filters, we can try to use one of them to see if we can add an extra touch to the image. So on the top, we have the portrait toning options. So let's see the Rosa, I'm not so sure about. However, the Gloria looks quite good. So what we can do now, we can adjust the strength of the filter. Now I think probably the 50 actually looks quite good, but let's see on 75, I'm not so sure. So let's keep it on 50 and that's that. If we want, we can try the other ones just very quickly. But for me, the Gloria is the choice. One more time before and after, and now we can move to the next edit. Now I'm going to show you how you can create a nice CPR look using the application. So first come first, let's open the develop tool and take the vibrance and saturation controller and bring it all the way down. We're looking for minus 100 on vibrance and minus 100 on saturation. We don't have to do anything else in the develop tool. So let's just close it. And the next tool we're going to open are the curves. Once we do that, we're going to be using the red curves and blue curves to create the sepia look. Now we're looking for that kind of brown orange look, and that is created by combining red and yellow. So to do that, we are here in a blue curves. We're going to make one point in the middle. And if we drag it up, we add blue. So what we need to do, we're going to drag it down and we're going to add a little bit of yellow. After that, we're going to move into the red curves where we are also going to create one point and we're going to take the point and we're going to bring it up until we get the look we like. Now it really is up to you how brown or orange you want to make it. However, for me, let's make it quite strong. Well, maybe not that strong somewhere around here. And let's go back to blue and maybe just back it up a little bit somewhere around here. So that looks quite good. Again, let's have a look at the before and after. And once we finish with the curves, we can close them, then jump into the develop tool. In the develop tool, we're going to add a little bit of dark vignette, and then we're going to add extra contrast using the contrast controller. Just one more time. Let's have a look at the before and after. And that's it for the sepia look. Now, before we're going to continue, I want to quickly mention that this tutorial is powered by our brand new Luminar for iPad complete guide. This interactive 66 page guide will help you to unlock the full creative potential of this application. Completed with details, instructions, images and even video tutorials covering every single tool in this application. This ultimate handbook is a product that you don't want to miss. To top it off, if you purchase it today, first of all, you will receive a free 12 months update of the guide as the application develops and you will also get our popular custom sky starter pack with skies designed specifically to be used in this application. Now, if you want to get it today, you can follow the link in the description to get the best possible price, or you can find out more about it on our website, cleverphotographer.com slash forward luminar for iPad. Moving on with our edit. Now I want to show you how we can create a look similar to the high key look. So something like a minimal white or minimal bright look. First thing we're going to do, we're going to open the develop tool and we're going to take our highlights and make them much brighter. Let's really open them up. After that, we are also going to open our shadows. So just somewhere around, let's have a look, maybe plus um, 40, 40 looks good. After that, we're going to adjust our saturation and vibrance not completely to minus 100, but close enough. So let's do that. Let's bring it all the way down. And once we there, we're going to actually bring it slowly up. Let's have a look. We want just a little bit of the skin tone to show. So I'm thinking somewhere around vibrance minus 60 and saturation minus 70. Now, once we finish with that, we can come back to our highlights and shadows where we now going to adjust our white point using the whites. So we're going to bring it up 
quite a lot. And then our blacks, we are gonna actually make them a little bit darker. So adjust it to somewhere around minus 10. With that being done, we can close the develop tool. And now we're gonna move into the Relight AI. Start by taking the background slider and bring it all the way down and adjust the foreground slider and bring it all the way up. The reason why we do that, we want the application to scan the image and create a mask for foreground and background. And once the application do that, we want to be easily able to see the border between the two zones. So now we can take the depth controller and bring it down until we see that the only foreground selected is the model. So in this case, in this image, to depth on zero. Now we can double tap on the controllers to make them brighter and we can adjust them. So we're gonna make the background brighter. So we're gonna take the controller and bring it up to somewhere around here, probably as far as 100. And with the foreground, we can do the same. We can make it brighter. So brighten up the model to let's say somewhere around plus 85. Once we finish with the Relight AI tool, we can close it tool. And to finish the look, we're gonna move into the photo filters, where we're gonna go into the creative section. And here we're gonna use and apply the grace filter. Once you do that, that really finishes the look. Let me show you before and after. And I think it's looking great. Now again, let me show you before where we started and after where we are, and I love the result. Now, one tip when you're using the high key effect, if you wanna bring back a little bit of the skin tones, what you can do, you can move back into the editing module where you can open the landscape tool and use the fog controller. But instead of going up, we're gonna actually bring it down. And when you apply the dehaze here, it brings back a little bit of the skin tones. Let me show you. It's very subtle, but it works quite well. So once we finish here, that's it. This is how you create a minimal white or minimal bright look. And finally, last edit, where I'm gonna show you the opposite of the high key, the low key look. Now we are a little bit limited on what we can do in the application. However, still, let me show you how I would approach it. So again, we're gonna start in a develop tool where this time we actually gonna bring the highlights down. We're gonna make them darker and we also gonna close the shadows a little bit. So we're gonna go to somewhere around, let's have a look, uh, minus 50. With the blacks, we definitely wanna make them darker. So let's do that. And with the whites, we're gonna bring them down as well. Additionally, we're gonna add a little bit of contrast and definitely we're gonna add some vignette. So we're gonna bring it quite dark, somewhere around minus 40. Similarly to the high key look, we're gonna take our saturation and vibrance controller and bring it all the way down. And after that, we're gonna bring it back a little bit just to get a little bit of the skin tones coming back. Once we finish here, we can close the develop tool. And again, we're gonna go into the Relight AI. Here, we're gonna take the background controller and bring it all the way down. And then we're gonna take the foreground controller and bring it all the way up. The application will take a moment, scan the image and creates the border between the foreground and background. And since we made this adjustment, we can clearly see the border as our foreground will be bright and background will be dark. Now we can use the depth controller to adjust the border between the two zones. In this case, we're gonna bring the depth all the way down to zero. Now we can reset our sliders and what we wanna do, we wanna darken our background a lot. So somewhere around minus 90. And with our foreground, we actually wanna make it quite dark too. So let's darken it down to somewhere around minus 50. So we are almost finished. Let's close the Relight AI tool and we're gonna finish it off in curves. In curves, again, we're gonna make our shadows darker. So we're gonna make a point in the lower part and drag it down. And then we're gonna make one point on the top. And this is where we're gonna recover a little bit of the highlights just to bring some details back around the person and around her face. So it is up to you how much you wanna add. For me, just somewhere around here, 
but that's about it. Now we can close the tool, again, have a look at the before and after, and this is how you create the opposite of the high key, the kind of darker low key look. And with that, we are finished with today's video. If you did enjoy this video, then make sure that you give it a like. And if you have any question about Luminar for iPad or Luminar Neo, then write them into the comments under this video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to make sure that you don't miss any of our future videos. For today, thank you very much for watching. Have a great day and I can't wait to see you next time.